Hola, today we're going to talk about the second kind of passive voice. This is a passive voice we use when we know by whom an action is done. So our formula number two is a word-for-word -word translation. We use this formula when we know by whom an action is done. So if we say, the doggy is washed by me, the homework is completed by the students, the food is prepared by the chef. Those are passive voice examples when we know by whom an action is done. We have a word-for-word -word translation that we use, and you can see it right there in pink. Let's say that together. It is subject plus ser plus past participle plus poor or day plus agent or doer. We use this formula when something is done by, when something was done by, when something used to be done by, etc. From the formula, we're going to use por with actions, like if we said the ball is hit by the batter. We're going to use de with emotions, like if you say the students are loved by their teacher. Let's look at an example of this word-for-word -word translation using the passive voice. We have, el libro es leído por la maestra. Our subject is el libro. Our form of ser is es. Leído is our past participle, which we're going to talk about how to form in just a minute in case you don't know how to do that. That's always going to agree with your subject, so it's going to act like an adjective. In this case, from our formula, we chose por because being read is an action, not an emotion. And then our agent or doer is la maestra. Now, we have to make sure we know how to conjugate the verb ser. The three most common verb tenses that you probably know are the present, the preterite, and the imperfect. So let's take a quick review of ser and all these verb tenses. Conjugate ser with me in the present, including the participle and command. Here we go. Ser to be. Soy, eres, es, somos, sois, son, siendo, sea, no sea. In the preterite, ser conjugates with me. Fui, fuiste, fue, fuimos, fuisteis, fueron. Muy bien. In the imperfect, it conjugates. Era, eras, era, éramos, erais, eran. Muy bien. Now, let's talk about how to do past participles. Past participles are similar to what you may already know, present participles. If you remember, present participles are formed, they end either in ando, yendo, or yendo. Past participles are just that simple to form. If it's an AR verb, it's going to end in ado. If it's an ER and IR, it's going to end in ido. So let's look at some examples of some AR verbs. Say them with me, please. We've got hablado, spoken, comenzado, begun. For ERs and IRs, we have a couple examples with ido. Let's say those together. Vestido, dressed. Aprendido, learned. Entendido, understood. Bebido, junk. If you have trouble translating them, just put an imaginary have in front. So have spoken, have begun, have dressed, have learned. And that way you'll understand how to trans translate them correctly to English. Now, we do, of course, have some irregular past participles. So our ones that are going to be accented on the E, though, are the ones that have too many vowels. The ones that end in A-E-R, E-E-R, the verb O-E-R. All those ones that are usually irregular. So let's go left to right and review our accented E, those in the past participle. Let's begin. Caer, caído, fallen. Traer, traído, brought. Creer, creído, believed. Leer, leído, read. Poseer, poseído, owned. Oír, oído, heard. Reer, reído, laughed. Sonreer, sonrido, smiled. Muy bien, so those are irregular accented idos. Our next irregular group in the past participles are going to end in to. So we're going to start with some of those. Let's say those together, left to right. With me, here we go. Abrir, abierto, opened. Freer, frito, fried. Escribir, escrito, written. Describir, descrito, described. Ver, visto, seen. Morir, muerto, died. Cubrir, cubierto, covered. Descubrir, descubierto, discovered. Poner, puesto, put or placed. Proponer, propuesto, proposed. Imponer, impuesto, imposed. Exponer, expuesto, exposed. Volver, vuelto, returned, as in have returned or come back. Devolver, devuelto, returned something. Revolver, revuelto, mixed or stirred. Resolver, resuelto, solved or resolved. Envolver, envuelto, wrapped. 
romper, roto, broken. You'll notice that cubrir and descubrir do the same thing. Every form of poner, poner, proponer, imponer, etc., they're all going to do the same thing as poner does. Same thing with volver, devolver, revolver, etc. So those are accented toes. The ones you're probably going to have the most trouble remembering are escribir being escrito, because you're not used to escribir being a regular verb. We have four toes that we need to remember that are irregular in the past participle. Let's look at those and say those together. Decir, dicho, said or told. Hacer, hecho, done or made. Satisfacer, satisfecho, satisfied. Deshacer, deshecho, undone or unmade. And then we have one that ends in so. And that one is imprimir, impreso, printed. Now, going back to our second formula. This is when we have a word-for-word -word translation of the passive voice when we know by whom an action is done. Let's say our formula again together. It is subject plus ser plus past participle plus por or de plus agent or doer. And again, we use this when something is done by someone or was done by someone or will be done by someone. We use por if it's an action being done, de if it's an emotion like loved by or respected by, admired by. So let's look at an example where everything agrees. Notice my subject, las casas, is agreeing with my past participle, which used to be limpiado, but I made feminine plural to agree with casas. So let's say this example sentence together in Spanish, todos juntos. Las casas son limpiadas por la criada. We have our formula, let's break it down. Our subject, las casas. Our form of ser, son. Our past participle, which is acting like an adjective, and agreeing with casas, limpiadas. We chose por because it's an action, good? And then our agent or doer is la criada. Now, let's look at some example sentences, read those together in Spanish, and we'll figure out what they mean in English. Feel free to pause the video at any point if you want to check and see if you are correct. Read it with me. Let's begin. Los regalos son comprados por los consumidores. En inglés, the presents are bought by the consumers. Muy bien. Our next example, la zapatería fue vendida por el dueño rico. En inglés, the shoe store was sold by the rich owner. Muy bien. Notice in these examples, regalos are subject is agreeing with our past participle, comprados. They're both masculine plural. So comprados is acting like an adjective. In our second example, zapateria is feminine singular. And our past participle, vendida, is agreeing with our subject, zapateria. Also notice our forms of ser. In the first example, we're in the present tense, they are bought. In the second example, we're in the preterite, it was sold. Our next example, read it with me, please. Las frutas son comidas por nosotros hoy. En inglés, the fruits are eaten by us today. Muy bien. And our last example, read it with me, please. Julia y Juan son amados de todos. En inglés, por favor. Julie and John are loved by everybody. Notice in our last example, we use de instead of por because now we have an emotion, loved by. Now, let's take a quick review of our previous video. There are actually two kinds of passive voice. There was the simple passive voice that we learned first. We use that when we do not know whom by, and by I'm sorry, when we do not know by whom an action is done. When we say something like, así se baila el tango. We have a singular noun tango, so we use the singular form baila, because we're either using third singular, say with third singular, or say with third plural. So, así se baila el tango with the third singular form. With a plural example right next door, we've got se aceptan todas las tarjetas de crédito. Aceptan is plural because tarjetas de crédito is plural. So, that's when we do not know by whom. Credit cards are accepted. The tango is danced. We don't know by whom. Other examples that you may see quite often, por ejemplo, se vende esta casa. O, se vende esta propiedad. Another simple passive voice example, en este espacio se permite fumar, o se ruega no fumar, en esta área se permite fumar. So those are all examples of the simple passive voice. Formula number two, which we're working on now, is when we do our word-for-word -word translation, when we know by whom an action is done. 
Again, our second formula, say it with me one more time, is subject plus ser plus past participle plus por or te plus agent or doer. Our final example of this, read it with me, is La novela fue escrita por el escritor. In English, we said, the novel was written by the writer. We know by whom. So we have to do formula number two, where we start with our subject, our form of ser, our past participle, which agrees with our subject, novela. We chose por here because it's an action. And then our agent or doer is el escritor. Now, let's practice. Pause the video and either write these out or say them out loud and test yourself and see if you can figure it out. I'm going to take you through the process to figure out which formula to use. So number one says, it is said the movie theater is dirty. First question to ask yourself, do we know by whom? We do not. So we want formula number one, the simple passive voice. The correct answer is, se dice que el cine está sucio. We use se dice because it's third singular with se because we do not know by whom. Now number two, the shirts were bought by the teenagers. The first question we ask ourselves, do we know by whom? We do. So formula number one or formula number two? Formula number two. Then we have to figure out which verb tense. Since the shirts were bought, that's going to be preterite. Pause the video if you need to and try this sentence. The correct answer is, say it with me, Las camisas fueron compradas por los jóvenes. Compradas has to be feminine plural because it's agreeing with camisas. Numero tres. The buildings were built last year. What's the first question you ask yourself when you think it might be passive voice? Exactly. Do you know by whom? We do not know by whom, so formula number one, simple passive voice. We have to figure out, is it singular or plural? It's plural. What verb tense do we want? Preterite, it's a completed action. So we're going to start with our say, third plural of the preterite. You can pause if you want to and give it a try. And the correct answer is? Se construyeron los edificios el año pasado. Muy bien. Our final exam for the teacher is admired by the students. What's our first question that we try to figure out if we think it might be passive voice? Do we know by whom? We do. So formula number one or formula number two? Number two, the word for word translation. Then we have to figure out what verb tense do we want for our subject plus ser plus past participle. What verb tense are we going to use ser in? The present. So pause the video if you want to try it by yourself. And the correct answer is, say it with me, La profesora es admirada de los estudiantes. It might be a male teacher. El profesor o el maestro es admirado de los estudiantes. In this case, we chose de because it was an emotion, not an action. That hopefully explains the passive voice. You've now learned the simple passive voice when you don't know by whom an action is done. Por ejemplo, se habla español. And you've, used, you've learned the little bit trickier passive voice when you do a word-for-word -word translation when you do know by whom an action is done. I hope that you've learned something today. Buena suerte con la voz pasiva. Ciao!